kind of depressing. Hey everybody, my name is John. You can call me Smelly Telly, and I'm here in Evansville at More Music and MoreGuitars.com. And today we're going to do kind of a cool little video where we're comparing two pedals. So which two pedals? We've got the MXR Univibe and the slightly kind of new uh, Electro Harmonics Eddie. Both of them do the vibrato thing, and we'll talk about vibra vibrato a little bit, but they kind of do some other things that aren't as similar. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of compare the vibrato tones, and then we're also going to compare the chorus tones to see how they're alike and see how they're different. The main idea being something that's based off of a vintage design versus something that's got a little bit more modern sensibility. So. Vibrato, well, we're going to start with that. What is vibrato? So think of vibrato as pitch. And I'm going to turn this off and I'll show you. So right now this is just clean channel. Uh, there's no effects on except for a little reverb. And vibrato would be like if you were slightly bending your strings and re releasing it or if you had a, you know, a tremolo bar or a Bigsby, that kind of thing. Or you can do that with chords. Or you see some people do the, which I do. This guitar is pretty tight and it's brand new. I don't want to push too hard on it. And that's vibrato. Some people get vibrato and tremolo confused and it's not your fault. It's Fender's fault really. And we won't go into that. So this is, and we're going to start with the MXR Univibe. This is uh, more of a, faithful recreation of the first Univibe pedal uh, back way back in the 60s and um, I don't know if you've seen them they're huge they sound glorious and you would recognize them from players like of course Jimi Hendrix and Robin Trower um, they have that very full lush sound now as far as I know neither one of those guys really used the vibrato part of it and that's what we're going to look at uh, later on we'll look at the chorus part so what the vibrato is going to do is, like I said, it's going to kind of raise and lower the pitch of anything that you're pushing through it. So I'm going to set it kind of, I would say, conservative right now. But as we bring especially the depth up, so the depth is going to be how wide the pitches are, right? How how high is the pitch going, how low is it going before it comes back to center. Now as we bring the speed up, that'll be how fast the little waves, if you want to think of them as waves. And that, that's where you really start to hear it, right? Now you can kind of control the subtleties of it by also bringing back the depth. Which actually I kind of like that. I'm kind of a recent vibrato nut, like I've just recently gotten into it. Check out Madison Cunningham. She can get anybody into vibrato. So let's crank them all up. Uh, we'll go ridiculous so you can kind of hear. Um, I don't think I would ever use this setting, but it might make you laugh just to hear me play it. I don't think we need any more of that. I'm sure some creative person out there can find something to do with that, but let's back off the controls a little bit. I'm going to leave it there because I think that sounds pretty good. And what we're going to do now is we are going to switch over to the Electro Harmonics Eddie and check out the vibrato style circuit that they've got. 
So we'll click it on. You can see I have everything. You know what? Let's do this. Let's just get everything in the center. And then probably what we'll end up doing is subtract. All right. Oh, except no. I didn't want to touch the tone and the volume. That is just basically to match the pedal to your signal. Which I've got. It's pretty good. And I think that setting just like that is actually kind of fairly close to what we had over here. depth a little bit. You can hear it's very subtle. I actually really like that. All right, let's start getting a little bit more extreme with it. So the rate, of course, is going to be, it's going to speed up how fast these kind of waves. And you can hear it gets ridiculous, you know, when it's maxed out. Reminds me of being a kid sitting in front of a fan when you're little and you talk into it. Um, we were pretty bored in the little country town that I grew up in, just so you know. All right, let's do this. Let's crank the depth up and see what that does. Okay, so the depth on this, you can hear, definitely goes a lot farther. Than the MXR. Yeah, that's like, you know, high school driver's ed movies that we had to watch right there. Sounds like my guitar has been drinking either that or it's a little car sick. Back to something a little bit more manageable. We'll play around with the shape. That's pretty cool. It kind of feels like somebody's taking your tones and at the, right at the last second kind of jerking them out of tune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. If I'm giggling, it just means I'm having fun. That's pretty cool. Without going on and on and on, obviously there's a whole lot more control, a whole lot more, I would say, kind of a modern sensibility with the Eddie. Let's talk about now the differences in the chorus. So we'll go back over here to the Univibe. So the chorus on this, the best way I can explain it is it's the swishy, phasey, flangery sound, like I said earlier, that like Hendrix and Robin Trower get. So this is kind of what most of us think of as the classic Univibe sound. I really don't even need to turn a dial because that's pretty much perfect. You can though, you can of course, you can play with the speed and the depth and all that. But right here, this is where we're living with that classic sound. Okay, to the chorus side of the eddy, so. So for me, that's uh, unusable, somebody might, like it, but let's pull it back. Let's kind of fine tune it back into something that maybe is a little bit more recognizable. 
We'll take the rate back. We'll take the depth back a little bit. You can get very, very subtle with it. Chorus here. Chorus on the classic Univibe. Very different. Okay, now one more thing to show you, and this might be painful. We have these actually running into the effects loop of, I am guessing, a Mesa Boogie behind me. If I turn around, it's going to say Mesa Boogie. I'm not going to turn around. And generally, and Larry and I are in agreement about this, especially in the chorus mode, the swishy sound sounds to me and Larry better going into your gain than the gain going into the pedal. It, so when you're in the effects loop, basically what's happening is the distortion or the gain from your amp comes first and then everything in that effects loop gets affected. So we're gonna turn on the gain. So here's the gain. And we're gonna turn this on. And I'm just going to tell you, it's going to sound bad. Just, I don't want you to be disappointed. So what's happening there is you're losing all of the chewiness when you're running this into the amp. You, uh, we, I would say for sure you would want this to go into the front of your amp as opposed to the effects loop. That's how I have mine set up on my board actually as well. Let's try uh, the, the, uh, the Eddie. Honestly, with the chorus, that doesn't sound bad. with the vibrato though. It's almost non-existent in the vibrato. I told Larry the one good thing about the vibrato type of circuit is no one can tell that you're out of tune. All right. I think I've played around long enough. So, which one? Honestly, you could have both on your board and there's not gonna to be too much overlap. Um, it's really cool to have something with an expression pedal and that kind of control. And if you're into kind of creating those sonic landscapes, something like this I think is fantastic. If you're more kind of like me and you just want three knobs, button here, button here, go. This is probably gonna be more your style. Uh, I think both of them are worth checking out. And with that said, if you'd wanna check them out, if you wanna know more about these, you can call down here at More Music or you can get on our website at moreguitars.com and you can comment on the video. You can call down, ask our, one of our sales associates and today's sales associate of the day will be Ed just cause it's the first name that came to mind. My name is John, you can call me Smelly and I'll see you next time.